Helldivers 2 is here, but before you start unleashing mayhem upon all the bugs, there are a few essential settings to change to improve both the visual and gameplay experience, regardless of whether you are on PS5 or PC. Some of these really should be on by default, so make sure to watch all the way through. Setting number one is under gameplay and is to change remember aim mode to per weapon. This way, if there's a gun you specifically love to use while scoped in, the game will remember that and when using that specific gun, it will scope in by default, therefore saving you from having to click R3 to do so. It effectively remembers how you last used each individual weapon and assumes that's how you'll want to use it next time, which I find to be quite useful. The second setting is found under the HUD options and is to change reticle visibility from dynamic to visible. This means that the reticle shows on screen even before you scope down your weapon, which can really help with aiming as you've effectively already aimed in before you've even pulled the trigger to do so. It's worth mentioning that you can also change the colour of this under accessibility settings and I do think having it red or yellow is kind of cool. Personally though, I do still prefer white. Setting number 3 is also in the HUD options but is found right at the bottom and it is to set compass ordinal directions to visible. This adds the sort of middle directions like northeast and southwest to your compass which makes callouts to your fellow hell divers so much easier as you aren't having to look for a specific number. I don't get why this isn't on by default, so share this video and tip with your squad as if everyone has this on, it makes navigation and communication a lot faster. Also, drop a like and consider subscribing if you do find this or any of the other settings useful as we're almost at my goal of 100,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate your help to get there. Oh, and whilst we're in these hood options, a little bonus setting to change is to reduce the scale of the hood. It's way too big by default, so I like to bring it down in size by a pretty significant amount. Anyway, setting number 4 is found under the visuals tab and it's a turn motion blur down. As this is a fast paced shooter, you'll also want to make sure you're playing in performance mode and at high frame rates, it's pretty much universally agreed that motion blur is kind of pointless and can even make things look worse, so make sure to turn it down to at the most 30, but you might even want it fully off. If for whatever reason you opt to play in the 30 FPS quality mode though, then do keep it on as it does make things look a bit smoother. The fifth setting is directly below this and it's a turn off depth of field. This adds a blur effect to things that you aren't necessarily directly looking at, and whilst I like this a lot in cinematics, I hate that blurry look it can seem to give to things during the gameplay, so personally, I keep it off. Setting 6 is the next one down and is to enable anti-aliasing if you're on PS5. This will make edges look much more defined and sharp, and I can't say I've been able to see any hit to performance with it turned on. On PC, you may see a bit more of a performance hit though, so you might want to leave it off if you are part of a PC master race. Again, moving another one down on the menu brings us to setting 7, which is sharpness, and I recommend you turn this all the way up to the maximum. It does default to 0.75, but turning it up to the max makes it easier to see distant objects clearly, which is always handy in a chaotic and fast paced shooter like Helldivers. You can really see the difference it makes even when just looking out of your ship's windows. Oh, and on that note, I'm curious as to what you've called your ship. Mine's called Agent of War, but comment what yours is and I'll make sure I heart it. Anyway, for setting number 8, move on over to the controller tab. I recommend you increase your camera sensitivity slightly and also your aim sensitivity. The exact values will come down to personal preference, so just have a play around with them, but I find the defaults feel a little too slow, especially considering how chaotic and fast the game can get at times. It is also worth mentioning that if you go down to the very bottom of the menu, there are even options to adjust the acceleration of the camera sensitivity, which I absolutely absolutely think are worth experimenting with. Something you should note is that by decreasing acceleration speeds to the minimum, looking around is now completely linear, which I personally quite like, as it has removed the sluggishness you might feel when you're quickly looking around, and thus makes the game feel even more fluid. If you do opt to do this, it can make your sensitivity feel much higher though, so you might want to go back and dial your look sensitivity back down a little. Like I said, all these sensitivity options are there for you to experiment with. As the game has only just released, I've not even found the best options for myself yet, but if you did want to copy what I settle on, I'll pin a comment with those values once I've decided on them. Moving on, the ninth setting is found at the bottom of this menu and is to decrease the dead zone value until you start to notice drift. This will require some testing as it will be difficult
different for everyone, but once you've got to the lowest value without experiencing any stick drift, add an extra 0.01 to that and keep it set there. Personally, I was able to get down to 0.02 before I saw any drift, so I've set mine to 0.03 and I can really feel the increase in responsiveness as a result. Another setting in the controller menu that's worth paying attention to is setting number 10, which is gyro aiming. More and more games are getting this now, and it's a really cool alternative option for aiming, is instead of using the right stick, you physically tilt the controller around, which gives you even more control, and it can feel a lot more like a mouse. It does take some getting used to, but I'd encourage you all to give it a go, as I think it's a really cool feature, and if you get used to it, it could even make your aim better. Speaking of cool controller features, click the video on screen now to watch my full review of the DualSense Edge, or alternatively, click the one below it to see loads of settings that you should change on a PS5 itself. Also, please drop a like if this video helped you, as well as subscribe to help me reach that goal of 100,000. I'd really appreciate it, as we're so almost there.